use the symbol less than, greater than, or equal to to compare the numbers 3 eighths and 0 0.4 or 4 tenths. In this problem, we're working with the inequality symbols for less than and greater than. So let's talk a little bit about what those symbols mean before we go ahead and do the problem. When I write this symbol, the small pointy end of the symbol at this end should be next to the smaller number. So the smaller number would go on this side. The wide open spread apart end of the symbol should be next to the larger number. If I wrote down this symbol, again, the point, the small end of the symbol, should be next to the smaller number. But the wide open end at this side should be next to the larger. The most important thing is that you get the smaller number next to the point and the larger number next to the wide open end of the symbol. Now, in English, we read from left to right. And when we read these symbols, we would read them as follows. The first one goes like this. The smaller is less than the larger number. When we read from left to right below, we would say the larger is greater than the smaller. So let's go ahead now and actually solve this problem. Because we have a fraction and a decimal involved in the same problem, we need to decide if we're going to work with decimals or with fractions. We really can go either way on this one. In fact, I'd like to look at the problem two different ways. We're going to solve the problem using decimals, and then we'll look at the same problem using fractions. You don't have to do it both ways. Just one or the other is fine. You could choose your favorite way and stick with that one method. So let's get started. For method one, Let's use decimals. Now, to use decimals here, well, 0 0.4 already is a decimal. What we need to do is we need to convert 3 eighths to decimal form. The fraction 3 eighths can be thought of as a division problem. Three divided by 8. We can write any fraction as division. We divide the numerator, the number on top, by the denominator, the number below. Now to convert to decimal, I want to write this using the long division process, where the 3 now goes inside the long division box, and the 8 goes in front. Now, 8 doesn't go into 3 as a whole number. I can write down a decimal point, though, to the right of the 3. Copy the decimal point up above in my answer space and add a 0. 8 now goes into 30. I can think of this as 30 to get started. 8 will go into 30 three times because 3 times 8 is 24. When I subtract, I get 6. And now I can add another 0 on, bring it down, and continue the process. 8 goes into 60 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. 60 minus 56 is 4. I can add another 0 on and bring it down. Eight goes into 45 times. 5 times 8 is 40. Subtract. I get 0 remainder. 
So now I can see that um, I have a decimal of 0 0.375438. Now let's compare the decimal for 3 eighths to the decimal we already had for 0 0.4. 3 eighths is 0.375. And 0 0.4, I'm just going to recopy. I want to write both of these decimals with the decimal point lining up. So the decimal point for 0 0.4, I want right below the decimal point for 0.375. And I want the 4 to the right of the decimal right below the 3 to the right of the decimal and 3 eighths. The 0 in 0 0.4 goes in front. Now the 3 eighths. I could also write a zero in front of the decimal point if I like. That represents the fact that it has zero whole number part. I don't need to write the zero there, it's optional, but you can write it if you want. Also, to the right of the four, I could write a couple zeros on the end of that decimal. Point 0.4 is equivalent to point 0.400. If that helps you to line up the decimal places, go ahead and write those two zeros on the end. But actually, all four zeros that are written here are unnecessary. They're not needed in order to read these numbers or to work this problem. Now let's go ahead and compare. Both these numbers have zero whole number part. Next we look to the first place to the right of the decimal point. We move to the right. That's where these two numbers differ. The 0 0.4 has a 4 in this tenths place. The 3 eighths has a 3 in the tenths place. Well, the 4 is larger than 3, so just from what's going on in that tenths place, I know the 0 0.4 is the larger of the two. That means the 0 0.375 is smaller. Now let's go ahead and compare our numbers using an inequality symbol. We started out with the 3 eighths written first. I'll write 3 eighths first and then the 0 0.4 second. Remember, the decimal for 3 eighths was 0 0.375. That's smaller. So I want to use the inequality symbol that will indicate that 3 eighths is smaller. I want the point of my inequality symbol next to the 3 eighths. In fact, we can read what we've written here as 3 eighths is less than 0.4. And we've solved our problem using decimals. Now let's go ahead and look at this problem one more way. We've already solved it with decimals and we know what the answer is. But I'd just like you to see that there is another approach where we write both of the numbers as fractions. So let's call this method two. Using fractions. Now we see that 3 eighths already is a fraction, so we'll leave that as is for now. What we have to do is look at our decimal 0 0.4 and convert that to a fraction form. Because 4 is in the tenths place of this decimal, the fraction that we have here is 4 over 10 or 4 tenths. Now, 3 eighths is the fraction we already had. What I'd like to be able to do now to compare these is write them with a common denominator. In order to find a common denominator, I need to find the LCM or least common multiple of 8 and 10. Let's find that on the side. The LCM of 8 and 10. 10. Those are my two denominators. 
that are involved. Now to find the LCM of 8 and 10, well, maybe you should just make a guess first of all. See if you can guess what that LCM is, but we'll go ahead and calculate it too. Okay. Now let's see if I go through the calculation. I'm going to factor 10 into primes. 10 is 2 times 5. And 8 I can break down into 4 times 2. But then I can factor that further as 2 times 2. That's from the 4 times a third 2. And those are all primes. Now I have 8 written as a product of primes. My LCM then needs to have 2's and 5's involved. I have 1, 2 coming from the 10. I have 3, 2's involved in my factors for the 8. The most number of 2's is here in the 8, so I'm going to use 3, 2's. And then for fives, there's one five from the 10, none from the eight. So I need one factor of five for my LCM. If I multiply these together now, two times two is four, times two is eight, times five is 40. There's my LCM for these two fractions. Now let's go ahead and rewrite both of these fractions with that common denominator of 40. Down below, I started out with a denominator of 10. To get a denominator of 40, I need to multiply by 4. So up above, I also need to multiply by 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So my 0 0.4, or 4 tenths, is equivalent to 16 fortieths. Now look at the 3 eighths down below. 8 times 5 will give me 40 down below. So up above, I multiply 3 times 5 to get 15. My 3 eighths, let's re rewrite that out in front, my 3 eighths is equivalent to 15 fortieths. Now that I have a common denominator, it's easy to see that 15 fortieths is less than 16 fortieths. So when I want to compare 3 eighths to 0 0.4, because 15 fortieths is less than 16 fortieths, this is my smaller, this is my larger, and so I can see that 3 eighths is smaller than 0 0.4. I set up my inequality symbol so the point is next to the 3 eighths, which is the smaller number.